because there's nothing else remotely like it. Um, now, I come at this subject from a naturalistic standpoint. Um, I think that they are flesh and blood creatures. Um, and yet, for me, alone among creatures, they seem like nothing less than uh, Olympic gods coming down from their altitude to consort with human beings briefly every now and then, um, only to return to their own realm, um, which in this case means places that human beings just never go. There's no reason to. Too hard to get to, too far from roads and, and trails. I think that they exude a, a flavor of being otherworldly, uh, supernatural, because they're just so good at what they do. They've had to be, to um, persist alongside of us and not be dominated or even believed in by more than um, a handful out of every thousand people. And yet, um, what fascinates me is that even as they seem otherworldly, they also seem somehow more of the earth than we are, um, more um, connected to nature, more embedded in nature, more a kind of... Um, to embody nature and yet to be us within nature because they are so much more like us than say chimpanzees and gorillas. Um, if you read stories about their behavior, some of which I've collected in Impossible Visits, um, you will see the nuances, the intelligence that you can, the subtle intelligence that you can infer from, from their reported behaviors um, that make them uh, exquisitely human-like and yet they can't allow themselves to come into close proximity to people for very long at all before um, uh, transcending back into where it is that they are when we cannot be with them. Um, if you're walking uh, at the edge of a thick woods um, someday and you hear um, a clear, rich, real double knock coming from up the hill in the forest, um, you feel so privileged. Uh, as though you've suddenly been granted uh, access, um, you've been uh, reached out to over a great gulf um, and lifted out of your everyday world um, and uh, landed for uh, a brief moment in a timeless spot. You know that 50 yards or 75 yards away, the actual hand of a Sasquatch is gripping a some sort of a knocking stick and and striking a tree and that this is being done very likely as a response to your being heard nearby. Uh, it may be an overture to you, it feels like that, um, or it could be a communication to others uh, of, of their own species to be aware that there's a human in the area, but at the very least the one doing the knocking is allowing you to hear the knocking. Um, and then if you make some response, if you knock back or make a, a vocal call, um, chances are you won't hear anything, anything more. So you have this rare synthesis of thrill and sadness, having been taken up into this fold, as I think of it, um, and then just as quickly um, set back down into the modern world. Certainly this analogy uh, risks sounding grandiose, but um, I think that for those of us who have seriously given ourselves over to this study, um, it can feel as though we are akin to Noah. Um, we're laboring away uh, in the face of general apathy, even disdain, um, uh, on some sturdy structure that will withstand the coming deluge. and. In our case, uh, the idea isn't to um, safeguard all species, but just one species. And the, the, the impending flood is a flood of sudden awareness that will um, be loosed upon the world. The actual existence of this, this creature. And when that day uh, comes, that um, a, a specimen body is somehow harvested and laid out on a slab uh, for dissection, um, I think there will be a lot of hysteria rampant in the land um, and that the media will attempt to propel and spike um, this hysteria for their ratings. And the hope of those of us who are trying to do 
um, legitimate research is that we will have created, akin to the ark, um, a, a, enough sources, uh, legitimate, um, reliable, elaborate, and textured sources of uh, true information that these can offset that uh, hysteria machine. And we can feel like Noah too um, because we are uh, incurring s significant risk um, to our personal human relationships often um, and even to our um, professional lives and our income. Um, I recently had to step away from a job uh, by mutual uh, agreement that I've held for 20 years. Um, none of my colleagues seem to um, place the slightest iota of value on the line of inquiry that I, I'm um, uh, preoccupied by these days. But it goes with the territory. And it's a high-risk, high-yield um, gamble that we're all taking. Um, not that Sasquatch exists, because those who have looked into the evidence know that it exists, but that it will uh, be seen to exist, and that the next stage in the, uh, the evolution of this branch of primatology will uh, unfold within our lifetime. But on the other hand, um, when you sort of step back and uh, take a um, more lighthearted uh, look at the, the, the whole landscape, it's hilarious to contemplate the, uh, the disparity, the vast disparity between the pre-discovery uh, world that we're in today and the post-discovery world that we may be in tomorrow or next week or five years from now. Here we are devoting ourselves to uh, a fringe field that isn't even accepted as, as a field. Um, when tomorrow, um, the last great discovery in zoology will have taken place, and nothing short of um, humankind's own vision of itself in the world will be transformed. There is to me something very primordial uh, about getting close to them, even the attempt to get near to them. Um, they seem to offer uh, a, um, a unique uh, avenue um, to some more authentic uh, relationship to uh, the ground of, of nature. You know, I could be overstating this, but it's really how I feel. Um, it's as though some separation has been uh, inflicted on us uh, at some point in the ancient past, and those of us who know of this being um, feel as though reaching closer to them, leaning toward them, attempting to um, come into contact is a way of superseding or healing this split, if only momentarily. One of the contributors to my book um, said of uh, walking in Sasquatch territory, you know when you get that sizzle, that sense that I've been here before, but I haven't? That to me really, really resonates deeply. Um, there's a, a sensation of deja vu, as though uh, what's entailed here is some um, ancient truth or ancient story, something that we once knew but have forgotten. This may sound positively certifiable, but um, I often feel as though, although I've never been together with them, I miss them. If there's a sense in which they are um, legitimately to be called a monster, we can perhaps think of the Latin root of that word, which is monstrare, which means to show, as in demonstrate. Um, I feel this fundamental yearning to show myself to them and to be shown them, um, to have a, m a mutual manifestation. I I don't know exactly why I'm groping, as you can see, groping toward um, getting a handle on it. Um, but it's probably going to take me the rest of my life to quite figure out why this is so important. Why they matter as much as they do. Please join this discussion with me um, and we can help each other toward clarification. Uh, right into um, my Facebook page, Impossible Visits and we can uh, carry on the, uh, the dialogue there.